So when you get vaccinated, for example, against chickenpox, your body will react to it by making antibodies and activating something called the T cells. The upshot is for chickenpox, you'll be immune for life because this virus doesn't change much and it makes a very strong reaction. So for coronaviruses, what we know is that when people become infected, they also make an immune response, but it doesn't actually last as long. So the four strains in humans are typically about 12 months. They last about 12 months, the immune response. This group of people who have recovered from infection, so they would, of course, be immune to infection. We need to do two things to prove that's the case. So there's two tests we need to do. The first is a blood test, and the blood test is a blood test that detects the antibodies that you make. That tells us that someone's seen the virus and have made a reaction against it, but it doesn't tell us if they are still shedding the virus or not. So the second test is the normal PCR test we do to detect the virus in everyone now, and that will tell us if there's any live virus still being um, in the throats or coming out of these people. Once we have no live virus, and we have uh, antibodies, then these people can then essentially go about their normal business. And I think they're a really valuable resource that we can use to help the economy get going a bit faster and to perhaps put in, in positions where they're going to be highly exposed to the virus, such as you know emergency rooms. The reason we think you can't get infected is we know for normal coronavirus infections, uh, you can't be reinfected uh, in that 12-month period. And we also now have, with COVID-19, uh, a study that's come out on primates where they have been given COVID-19 and recovered and then re-challenged and they won't become infected or they don't become infected. So that's pretty strong evidence that once you're immune, at least for 12 months, which would just be based on all the other coronaviruses, you'll be immune. don't know what your response to this virus is going to be. And we already know, for example, our largest group of patients are females 20 to 29. We already know we have young people who have died from this disease. Yes, it doesn't certainly seem to take older people more, but as a young person, you are not immune to this virus and it could have serious consequences. So that's why I say that's a, a lottery I don't want to buy a ticket in. like something we could do at a GP clinic that says you've got the actual virus and we detect the nucleic acid, the DNA or RNA material in this case of the virus. That's what we'd really need rather than taking this 24 to 48 hours to do the tests uh, that we have at the moment. That is possible, it just might take some time. What I'm really pleased to see now is a number of states, uh, Queensland, uh, Western Australia, for example, are now expanding their testing criteria to people who have symptoms but may, may not have qualified before because they didn't have a direct contact. And this is really important because the next wave of this disease, now that the numbers are going down from all our international visitor um, cases being blocked, it will be community spread. And the community spread will happen and people will pop up and have the virus where we don't know how they got it. And so they definitely need to be tested. So I, I would expect a little bit of an upswing in the numbers just based on the wider testing that we have. Um, but I think it's a good thing because we must know about those people if we're going to control the infection. <laughs>